Most of you probably don't care about referees. Well, until the cards come out, of course. But how would you feel if the referee of your match was previously an armed gang member? We'll explain later on, but first, let's agree on something. Football is a game that favours the strikers who score the best goals, the defenders with the smoothest slide tackles, and the managers with the smartest strategies. It's the seduction of the spotlight and the adoration from screaming fans on the big stage that draws many young players to the sport. And ultimately, it's their incredible ability, or sometimes lack thereof, that keeps their name in the history books forever. The rest of the people who contribute to the game are mostly forgotten. So, how does a referee rise from obscurity to become one of the most iconic men in football history? How did this man become one of the most respected and feared men on the pitch, going boot for boot, pun intended, with some of the biggest and fiercest players in history, without scoring any goals or making any nasty tackles? This is the story of the one and only Pierluigi Colina. Pierluigi Colina is one of the only referees in football who was as entertaining and captivating to watch as the players. His decision-making was pretty much flawless and saw things that other referees just couldn't. He became so iconic that he was actually on the cover of Pro Evolution Soccer 3 20 years ago, which was the most popular football video game in the world. Could you even imagine seeing a referee on the cover of FIFA 23? He was a no-nonsense referee. You just didn't mess with Kalina at any time, in any game. He was as tough and ruthless as some of the craziest players in football. Imagine staring into these scary eagle eyes while getting dressed down by Kalina. It's enough to make anyone run away with their tail between their legs. His toughness was likely influenced by starting his football career in an Italian gang, but that's a story we'll get onto later in this video. Keep watching till the end. You don't want to miss that part. But aside from his scary nature during games, Kalina had another side to him that made people respect him even more, his affection and empathy. Players were drawn to him because he had a soft side that gave them comfort during games. He was a pleasant enigma. But how did he become this magnetic and respected personality? To understand that, we have to go back to where it all began. February 13th, 1960. A little Pierluigi Kalina is born in the city of Bologna. Like all boys, he starts playing football as soon as he can. He played as a centre-back, but Kalina never really made a mark in the game as a player. So in 1977, he thought it'd be interesting to take a referee course, and it was just meant to be. Everyone could immediately see his exceptional abilities as a referee. The seeds for his legendary career were planted that year. He displayed exceptional discipline, charisma, and firmness in his first few years even while going through a very chaotic time in his life. You see, while he was officiating his first few regional matches, he was also pursuing a degree in economics and completing his mandatory military service. It was hard, but all these experiences helped him build character and mental resilience that would help him throughout his career. In 1988, he was promoted to the Italian Serie C1 and Serie C2. And after only three seasons in the third division, he was promoted to the Italian Serie B. Obviously, his entourage was very impressed with his fast progress, but the rest of the football world didn't really notice him. As I said before, who really cares about referees, right? Well, that was all about to change. Around this time, Colina would go through an experience that would simultaneously change his life and image forever. Unfortunately, he was suffering from alopecia, an autoimmune disease that attacks a person's hair follicles and causes them to lose all of their hair. And after only 10 days, Kalina lost every single hair on his body. To make matters worse, he was just about to be promoted to the Italian Serie A, which is the biggest stage in Italian football and would come with a lot of pressure. Not an ideal time to go through such a big transformation. But do you think it bothered Kalina? Not at all. He wasn't afraid of sending players off with a red card. Surely his hair walking out on him won't be a problem. In fact, the hair loss gave him a new look that was pleasantly terrifying. 
This earned him his nickname Kojak, a bold detective in an Italian TV show. He continued to officiate games and rise at a rapid rate. In 1996, and after only four years in Serie A, he was called to be the referee of the Olympic Games final between Argentina and Nigeria. He then went on to the 1998 World Cup, where he put in even more stellar performances, winning him the IFFHS World's Best Referee Award that same year. The year after that, he was picked as the official referee for the UEFA Champions League final. Remember, this is only four years after being called up initially by FIFA. Kalina's career was on steroids. One thing that gave him an edge over other referees was his ability to speak multiple languages. Being multilingual meant he could communicate with most players very easily. But there was another thing that made Kalina special that is honestly very shocking. As part of his preparation for games, he would study both teams in great detail. He studied their formations, the relationships between various players, which players were prone to faking injuries or diving. Nothing was catching this man by surprise. With this approach, he managed to reduce the number of yellow cards in the UEFA Champions League drastically. One of the games that showed Kalina's exceptional character as a referee was the final of the 1999 Champions League between Bayern Munich and Manchester United. Bayern Munich had gone up by one goal early in the game. They kept this lead until the dying minutes of the game. Bayern Munich could feel the trophy in their hands already. But Ole Gunnar Solskjaer came on and gave Bayern fans one of the most soul-crushing moments in history. Ole scored the winning goal in the last minute after Teddy Sheringham had just scored the equaliser for Manchester United. The United players ran wild in celebration. The Bayern Munich players were down and out. That must be one of the worst feelings. And that's when Kalina showed once again he had an incredibly heartwarming side to him. He was seen with the Bayern Munich players, especially legendary defender Sami Kafour, trying to console them. The Man United players were celebrating their second goal hysterically when I saw a Bayern player completely, hopelessly fall to the ground and he was feeling great disappointment. I approached him and found nothing to say to him except, get up and fight, you still have 20 seconds. At that moment, I saw the true face of football, death and life in one stadium. People celebrating madly and people desperate to death. Kalina still describes that game as the greatest game he's ever refereed. Kalina continued to make his name known all around the world with his no-nonsense approach. He had many iconic moments in his time. One of my personal favorites is the time when he made Francesco Totti retake a free kick three times. It was a Serie A game between AS Roma and Inter Milan. The first time Totti tried to kick the ball, the Inter Milan wall moved earlier than allowed. And so Kalina walked up to the wall and showed Zanetti, one of the defenders, a yellow card. The second attempt was stopped because the wall decided to move, again. Zamorano was the next victim of Kalina's wrath. He was also shown a yellow card. Kalina was not pulling any punches. After that, the players got the message and decided to stay in place until the shot was taken. Moments like these cemented Kalina's influence in the game. He became so influential that FIFA did something that no one had ever seen before. Kalina was called up to the Euro 2004 tournament, but sadly, he was passed on for the final match. At this point, Kalina had officiated all other big matches apart from the Euro final. Of course, he had the chance to do it for the next tournament, but there was one slight problem. FIFA implemented an age limit for their referees, and so it meant that Kalina was going to miss out on the Euro final and have one unchecked item on his referee bucket list. But in an insane turn of events, the Italian Federation decided to raise their age limit hoping FIFA would do the same. But all of this satisfying news was about to go south because of a huge sponsorship deal. You see, Kalina became such a big brand that he ended up signing a sponsorship deal with Opel, who were also a sponsor of AC Milan. This was a conflict of interest in the eyes of the Federation. So they decided to stop Kalina from refereeing any matches in Serie A until the deal would be over. So, like a boss, Kalina sent in his resignation letter and left. The Federation rejected the letter, but they forgot about a little detail. You don't tell Kalina what to do. 
not on or off the field. But perhaps the biggest event that proved Kalina had unshakable integrity was the Calciopoli scandal. This was one of the biggest scandals we ever saw in football. It almost destroyed Italian football. Maybe we should make a video explaining in detail what happened. Let us know. But the short version is, referees were getting paid lots of money by a man named Luciano Moggi to fix matches. Pretty much all referees agreed, except for the one and only Pierluigi Kalina. There were even phone call recordings of Luciano Moggi threatening to punish Kalina. But once again, Kalina bends to no one. He was taught by nuns as a young boy. So maybe that's where he gets it from. But remember the gang we spoke about in the beginning? Well, it wasn't an actual criminal organization, but actually a football team called the Lazio Pistols. And their name wasn't just a metaphor. And whilst Kalina wasn't directly part of the team, he definitely was a massive fan. And let me tell you, this was one of the most dangerous teams in football history. It all started when two lead players of the team had a heated conflict that split the team up into two sides and they went at it as if they were rival gangs. The team played together perfectly well on the field, but as soon as they left the pitch, it was a different story. They even had two different locker rooms because tensions were too high. It became so serious that players from both teams carried guns to protect themselves. No, we didn't make that up. That actually happened. That may have been why Kalina loved them so much. They were as crazy and fierce as he was. Kalina never got to the point of carrying a weapon to games, but he has won the world's best referee award six times during his career. So maybe supporting a dangerous team wasn't so bad for him after all. Kalina changed refereeing forever. Football will forever be grateful for this man. I think we all agree he is the GOAT when it comes to refereeing. But let us know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Skiller Originals and watch our latest video on screen. You'll love it.